you know, I come from a fairly conventional family. My my mom's a teacher, my dad's a commercial loan officer, and and I'd say that my sisters and I are all um, you know, um, ambitious. Like my my older sister is a, a, a just received her PhD from Stanford. My younger sister is an accountant at KPMG in Boston, and from what I understand, well on her way to being a partner. I grew up in a period when this was in the late '90s. It was my my high school years, so it was the peak of the dot com era, and and you know it seemed like you couldn't meet anyone without getting a stock pick, and uh, I kind of really took took a liking to that. And then uh, during Duke, my my passions definitely shifted, and I realized that maybe that pursuit was not mine. Camp Carolina and the Blue Ridge Mountains of Western North Carolina made a big difference. Uh, and it was the first time where um, I was having a lot of fun. I wasn't stuck in an office in the summertime. And it was such a marked contrast from my summers in, in high school where you know, I had worked for the Greater Providence Chamber of Commerce. I had an internship at Payne Weber. You know, I was like 16 and I'm going to work in a suit every day, which is kind of ridiculous in retrospect. But I was just had a blast at camp. and. I don't think then I ever I thought that I could somehow make a make a living out of this, but I just knew that I was having fun, and that I didn't want that to end. When I returned to school after those those two summers, I mean, it basically, got, like the first summer I came back and I changed a lot. And the second summer I came back and I changed even more. And the following summer after that, I hiked the Appalachian Trail, and I think that is where probably what you know, was the the straw that broke the camel's back. It was tough for me to think about accepting a, a fairly normal existence um, after having had those experiences. I was just having too much fun out there. The economy took a real turn after 9-11 and I was, this was at a critical point in my college career where it's critical that you get a good internship uh, this, the summer before you graduate. And that sort of lines you up, it gives you some good experience, it get, makes you some connections. And 9-11 happened and you know, the economy just sort of tanked. You know, my class got sort of stuck. Uh, there were a lot of students like myself who suddenly the, uh, those opportunities that we thought we had when we, when we en were enrolled into Duke and, and to other institutions suddenly went, whoa, this is a, now a different environment. And when I was a freshman, there were kids, and this was normal to get five or six job offers. And you know, every, we all thought that we were going to have the same situation when we were older and on the verge of graduating. So yeah, 9-11 certainly limited the opportunities I had and that sort of gave me an excuse to say, well, you know, if the opportunities aren't here now, maybe they'll be here next year. And in the meantime, I'm going to go have some more fun. <laughs> and then I just, I never really came back. <laughs> I think that was actually the agreement with my parents is that I could, they would let, they would allow me to go hike the Appalachian Trail if, assuming the summer afterwards, that I would get a, get a real job. I ran in high school and college as a cross country and track athlete runner and um, we used to talk about there being two types of guys in the team. There were racers and then there were runners. And the racers were the guys who just, who trained to show up to the starting line and to go beat people. And then there were runners who practiced every day because we needed to run. It was so just a part of us that it was our, our therapy session. And whenever we were injured, we went stir crazy. And I was a runner, always have been a runner. I still run today. And I think that you know, with this, with this adventure stuff, it's the same thing. That this, for me, it's therapy. It's what I want to be doing. It's, so, it's a central part of me, yeah. I wouldn't say I'm lonely, uh, if only because I've spent so much time out there now that I feel uh, it feels pretty natural to me to be in that environment. And I sort of developed this rapport with the landscape, uh, as sort of as crazy as that sounds. Like every place has sort of its own character, and there's this this relationship with with nature, um, at least that I convince myself of. Because you know, in reality, probably nature doesn't care, and it's uh, it's going to do what it wants to do, and my existence doesn't really matter to it, but it's helpful at least in my mind to think that nature and I are sort of going back and forth here, uh, that there's this sort of this connection. 
I, I think there are a couple of different components of it, and I, it's not just one single thing. Partly it's aesthetics. I mean, I, I get to see incredibly beautiful places, and oftentimes they're far from trailheads and far from roads, not places where you can access easily or drive your car up to. And I've also found that by getting these places under my own power, uh, that there's, it's somehow much more rewarding to, to experience it, that I, that I earn this view or this experience. Part of it is also cultural, being able to go into villages and towns that I've never been into before, make friends, learn from them. Uh, that's also a really rewarding aspect. I love the challenge of it, that physical and mental challenge, basically to see how, how far I can push myself and what my limits are. But I think the biggest thing for me is that uh, when I'm out there, I, I feel alive. I feel like I have 80 years on this planet to do something. And when I'm out there, I feel like I'm taking advantage of at least some of those years. This is primo. It doesn't get any better than this.